Did you read a review where the critic told you you should not or should see a film? But then you found out that without a doubt the film critic must have been ill. It's the attack, the attack, the attack, the attack of the rotten tomatoes. It's the attack, the attack, now it's time to fight back against rotten tomatoes. Hello, movieholics. Welcome back to Attack of the Rotten Tomatoes. I'm Monica Kasurik. And I'm Kyler Wilson, and today we're going to be looking at one of the better boxing movies that we've seen in quite some time. That movie being Southpaw, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Now, this movie is quite the conundrum for us when it comes to looking at what the critics had to say. The audience seemed to enjoy the film pretty well, giving it a 78%. But the critics only gave it 59%, and this is the kind of movie that they would typically eat up. So let's take a look at some of the things that the critics thought were missing from the film. From Henry Fitzherbert. There's no doubting Gyllenhaal's commitment to the role, and the climactic fight feels absolutely genuine. It's just not every exciting or emotional. Every exciting, huh? Well, Henry, I don't think you're every exciting either. That being said, if you don't think that a man's wife being killed over his own hot-headedness and then losing his daughter to the system afterwards is not emotional, then you don't have an every big heart, do you? From Charlotte O'Sullivan, perhaps overly keen to emulate his hero's turn in Raging Bull, Gyllenhaal puts too much faith in the idea that size matters. It seems as though you think Jake Gyllenhaal relied on his look throughout the film rather than offering up acting chops, which makes us think you didn't watch this film. From Matthew Razek. Southpaw doesn't give you that thrill, and because of that, it can throw a few good punches, but it never lands a KO. Maybe you were so focused on using a boxing reference in your review that you completely missed the excitement of the final act. It was predictable, sure, but we were with his character the whole way. From Chris Nashawaddy, just as director Antoine Fuqua starts to close in on something interesting and unexpected, he retreats to the safety of his corner and gives us what we've seen too many times before, a predictable flurry of melodramatic jabs. Once again, we get a critic that's so focused on making boxing puns that they can't focus on the fact that while this movie isn't wildly original, it is well produced, well shot, well acted, and mostly well written, which is more than I can say for your critique. How's that for a jab? From Marianne Johnson. Clichéd, obvious, and tired, we've seen this story so many times before, but rarely with such a lack of appreciation for just how unheroic its hero is. Based on your review, I'd say you missed the point, so allow me to explain. Is this movie basically the same as every other boxing movie? Yes. But is its hero? No. In fact, he isn't a hero at all, which is the point of the film. He's just a regular guy who's good at boxing who over the course of the film grows from immature brat to fairly respectable man who overcomes some pretty big adversity. But, you know, God forbid you have character growth in your film. From Gary Walcott. A movie is pretty bad when, in this critic's opinion, an Adam Sandler movie opening the same weekend has a higher rating. With all due respect, Gary, what the hell are you talking about? The only Adam Sandler movie that opened that same weekend was Pixels, which is one of the lowest rated movies in 2015. The rate's a full 42% lower than Southpaw on the very website that's hosting your review, which we also disagree with. So again I ask, what the hell are you talking about? From Michael Sragow, when Billy's smart, ardent wife Maureen, Rachel McAdams, warns him that he'll be punch drunk in two years, she seems off by at least 18 months. We must agree with that statement 100%. Moving on. From Rafael Guzman, in the end, Southpaw knocks itself to the mat. Once again, we have a critic that seems more interested in making a boxing joke than actually giving the movie a fair review. So here's a list of critics that we think Rotten Tomatoes should omit from the scoring selection. Offers a hard punch, but no knockout. It punches past box cliches. Southpaw is MMA, mixed movie arts, with emphasis on mixed. Southpaw could have been a contender to become a memorable summer movie if it weren't so darn melodramatic in just about all the wrong places. A far from fresh drama that nevertheless manages to pack a punch, so to speak. In case you didn't get the joke, he added parentheses. Packed with raw energy, but doesn't quite knock you out. And we could go on for hours. Your job is to critique a movie. Leave the witty banter to people like us. Here's the deal. This isn't the most original movie ever made, and we know that. But it seems like people are so hung up on the originality that they're completely overlooking the fact that they're getting a very well-acted and extremely well-shot film with a mostly interesting story. 
That being said, the thing that we think is the biggest problem is that the main character ends up being the cause of every bad thing that happens. But no one really talks about that. For all the reasons discussed, we believe that the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter should be adjusted from 59% to 85%. A solid B seems fair to us. So what'd you all think? Were we unfair in our review of the Rotten Tomatoes reviews? Or did we get it right? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below, and as always, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud, and catch us next time on Attack of the Rotten Tomatoes. Stay fresh, movieholics!